just doing a little PM on this guy. So time doesn't matter here because this is a critical machine and we have the go ahead just to take our time and do what it needs. Power's off and it's been verified. So we're going to check all the electrical connections. So after checking all the bolted down connections, we want to tug on the stake ons wherever they are within the system, make sure they're nice and tight. Stuff like this, this dust that's developing on top of the contactor, that can lead to tracking across when there's moisture present. So we want to clean this so up I as like well. pulling these off of the compressor just for a quick inspection internally and externally just to make sure there's no dust buildup, there's no burnt connections. You want to open up the covers on the pressure controls and look for dust accumulation and stuff and maybe clean them if we can. And you can see on this one here, there's quite a bit of dust, but I revealed one thing that I can rectify right now is you see this little rub through right here. You can also see it on the other side of the cover, which is right here. So we're gonna have to fix that. I mean, it doesn't look like it's gonna take much, maybe zip tying these wires together and pushing them back a bit, but things like this is what we find on a PM and we can rectify it now. So in six months, a year from now, we don't have a short in this machine. Now we do wanna look for signs of oil. Now, this stuff here is old. This was repaired a while back, but it probably should have been cleaned up and it's been checked with a leak detector. So there's no leaks there, but we should probably clean this up. So the next time we come back, and we see oil, we know something might be happening, but we gotta clean that up. Check for signs of oil guys around the system because that's super important because it could reveal some sort of leak at some point. Condenser coils, obviously, we wanna check them for cleanliness. Now, on the, on the back side of the coil, we can see some dirt, so this one's gonna need to be cleaned. We're gonna clean that up. I don't know if you can see the dirt in there or not, but we're gonna clean this coil up and get it nice and clean as part of this. Super PM. important because this machine runs all year long. We want to check the crankcase heater, make sure it's operating. We can check the amp draw of the crankcase heater when the system's back up and running. So we're going to do that the as well. The fan blade is super important because if you have a crack or an imbalance or a bent blade or something like that and the airflow is not good, vibration can cause a lot of problems with the machine. And the capacitor on this one is kind of in a weird spot. It's back in there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's back in there. So. We want to check the microfarads on that cap because all it takes is a bad cap, right? A condenser fan not running, takes out this entire machine, which is a critical piece of equipment. So we obviously want to run the machine. We want to take an amp draw of the compressor and check it against the nameplate. Amp draw the fan motor, check it against the nameplate. And one thing I should bring up too is the sight glass is your friend. A lot of people don't like them, but I love sight glasses. I know when this machine is running properly, the sight glass is clear. This machine is satisfying the room. It's removing humidity. It's cooling it down to its set point. I know there's not a problem with the refrigeration side of this thing, but if you feel that there is, you can always put your gauges or your probes on the machine just to check and make sure. Something else to check here, guys, is this insulation, right? This Armaflex stuff, it breaks down over time. It gets really crumbly because of the UV. Sometimes the birds come at it. Right, um, so I like to use a product called K-Flex Titan. It's basically the same type of insulation, but it's got a UV jacket over top of it, and it's all in one piece. It's not like you have to paint it or add it afterwards, but it's probably a good idea at some point that this insulation gets replaced. As far as mechanical inspections go, I mean, that's pretty much it. The other thing that you might want to look at is these flexible connectors that go from the refrigerant lines to the pressure controls, because sometimes they can actually start to leak right at this point right here so you can check those for leaks or signs of oil as well and just make sure that they're not flapping around okay these ones are, are pretty good also an air handler portion to this okay so the air handler portion is a separate portion which we're not going to discuss in this video but it's very important you go down and check the airflow any sort of drives belts lubrication filters all of that stuff needs to all be checked and the cleanliness of the evaporator coil. Now this thing does use a superheat controller with an electronic expansion valve, which is controlled by this Emerson EC3B72 controller. Now it keeps a very tight superheat and a very tight room temperature by using this. So you'd really have to go onto the computer system or tap into that with the right program to see how it's all running, right? And if there's any changes that need to be made, you can do it from in there, which is pretty cool. But as far as mechanical inspections go, that's pretty much it. Just give it an all round comprehensive inspection of the machine, just to make sure we don't have any issues moving forward. Happy HVACing.